make it this morning. I'm going to go ahead and record um, our discussion today. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining. Like I said, there are some new faces, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Brian Burgos. I am the um, director, director of Advancement over at Borgade Catholic High School, and um, I've been honored with uh, this second year of helping kind of plan and organize the development director meetings that happen monthly. Um, Obviously, we have more than development directors join us. Um, today, I've extended the invite to, to admissions folks. Um, we also have folks from CEA who are here, um, very supportive of us in these meetings, um, and they give a lot of insight as well. So um, thank you all for, for joining this morning. If you're new, um, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. We'll go ahead and get started with prayer. Um, I found a prayer today from a source that, uh, for those who may not know, Borgade has a new Dean of Students this year, and um, he is an absolute um, Notre Dame nut job. Uh, he just passionate and obsessed with Notre Dame. He went there. Um, but anyways, he, he put us on to um, this resource that he uses, and it's a, it's a daily prayer resource that comes from the University of Notre Dame called Faith ND. And uh, within this resource, each day they get sent, um, whoever subscribes to it, they get sent to gospel, the gospel of the day. Then there's a reflection from a Notre Dame student or, or alumni. Um, and then there's a prayer. And then they also recognize a saint. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read the prayer from Reverend Paul Coleman um, on today's uh, Notre Dame daily prayer here. Let us place ourselves in the presence of God and begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the healing power of your Son was made manifest through signs and wonders during his earthly ministry. Open our eyes to the ways of grace at work among us in these Lenten days. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Excellent. So yeah, today's going to be a little bit different. Um, we don't have a, an organized presenter, um, as you can see through, through this agenda here. Um, when we were originally kind of planning um, the meeting series for, for this school year, um, it was suggested that it would be nice to just kind of have a, a roundtable discussion or a group discussion amongst the development people and admissions people um, about, you know, some of the strategies that have worked well for us and, and um, maybe ones that haven't worked as well that we had tried for the first time. Um, and that's kind of sort of developed into this COVID world. And I thought it would be interesting to sort of just go around the, the Zoom room um, and just hear feedback from people who have had to try new things. Um, there hasn't been a lot of face-to-face -face over the last 12 months. Um, there's been a lot of interruptions. There's been a lot of planning that we didn't intend to have for our school years. Um, and, and it's been a real challenge for, for many of us. So um, that said, I think there's been some real successes and I've been hearing from some of you, um, you know, outside of our monthly meetings that, that have had some real successes with different things that you've been able to try or that you've been forced to try, um, whether you're in the admissions realm or the development realm. But um, yeah, I, I just thought it would be nice to have that discussion. So if there's anyone who, who wants to jump out on the ledge first and, and maybe talk about something that, um, that they didn't anticipate having to do this year, but with COVID, um, it, it became a reality. And, and what was that experience like for you, whether it be in the world of fundraising or maybe stewardship, um, you know, having to find creative ways to say thank you um, in the events realm, admissions, anything there. I, I'll invite anyone to, to kind of come forward and, and maybe start us off. Rose, you're raising your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, I figure I'll get it, get it over with. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of things, obviously, with, uh, with COVID, like you said, it really did change some things for, for me, for my school. And I, I'm from St. Vincent de Paul Catholic School. Uh, and and so I am it for development. I, I am the development office. And so for me, it prompted um, some great things. One is we have what we call a guardian angel program. And every year we do a guardian angel mass and we invite all of our guardian angels. And as you know, other schools, we have some guardian angels who live out of state. 
Well, because we've been live streaming the mass on Wednesdays for all of our students, we decided, well, well, we already do that now. Let's live stream our guardian angel mass. And that was not anything that ever occurred to us before COVID, um, partly because we just didn't have the technology and, and we didn't need to do it, so we never did it. Um, and then because of COVID, I'm watching mass with my mom every Sunday and we watch Heart of the Nation. And at Heart of the Nation, when they do the uh, prayers of the faithful, they have a basket with all the um, envelopes from people asking for prayer. And as they do the prayers of the faithful, the priest puts his hands over the basket and prays for every single person who, um, who sent in a, a, a prayer request. So I was like, well, I could do that for the guardian angel mass. I put all of the guardian angels names in a basket and we put it in front of the Ambo. And two of the people who watched it live stream, one from California and one from North Carolina, they emailed me that day and said that was so touching that our names were in that basket and you prayed for us right there in mass. And we pray for that our donors every week in mass. We have a, an intention specifically for all the people who support St. Vincent de Paul Catholic School. But the fact that they saw it and that we were live streaming again, just because of COVID, it was sort of, a, it, it was a blessing. It wasn't sort of, it was really a blessing to our school. Um, the other thing that as an elementary school and as a school that doesn't have as many resources, I hadn't really um, been able to dive into doing a lot of online. We got the first, our online donate button like a year and a half ago. And we couldn't, we canceled our golf tournament last year because of COVID. We first, we uh, postponed it and then we, then we canceled it because we couldn't have it. And so what it did was give me some time and working with a company. And this year we're having our golf term, tournament on May 1st and all, everything is um, virtual and done ahead of time. So usually when you come, you know, they, they may have already, um, registered online, but you're still selling mulligans and raffle tickets and you're giving away uh, the little goodie bags and all that. Well, we streamlined the whole thing. So now it's all gonna be um, pre-register and done online to keep everything. And, and like even the raffle tickets, if somebody buys a raffle ticket, I'm personally gonna write their name on the raffle tickets. And then when that person comes, I just hand them an envelope and they get to go put the raffle ticket in the hopper. But it, it's gonna just really, uh, you know, shut down all these big groups around a table, uh, writing names feverishly or, or big long lines of people waiting for us to register them and get them in. So again, it's just one of those things where it was out of necessity, but it sort of prompted um, us to move forward with things and then to think about it differently. And then I'll just close with two things. Um, we've had a Zoom visit with a donor which which went pretty well and he lives in California so we may or may not have been able to visit with him personally anyway um it's different with zoom um but but it was still a, a fruitful visit and then I also did a porch visit with a, a donor so she lives here in town and I it was just I we just sat on her front porch so we sat about eight feet away and we chatted and we talked and and I was able to reach out to her as a donor and um, so, so those are just some of the ways that I think um, it's changed me, but for the better. Hey, Rose, did you uh, do that golf thing uh, already or is that coming up? It's coming up on May 1st. So we, we did our golf event in January and I've been doing what I call the express check-in where you buy everything up front. I've been doing that for years. Uh, at my previous school and also here and uh, and it does it it cuts down lines and whatnot and uh, so we just kind of you, know, you you walk up and you get everything and if you want to buy extra raffle tickets you can always do that but uh, but it's it's just an easy way to kind of you know speed people through the lines and uh, and whatnot and you know we had several tables laid out and we had a hundred and how many do we have 148 players so you know we, we really spread them out quite, quite a lot. And um, I think that's the way to go, you know, so, so my two cents. We also serve lunch on the golf course, by the way. I don't know, maybe you're doing the same. We are, they're, they're doing it at the turn and then they're gonna have outdoor tables set up as well. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Worked out pretty well. We also had a couple of kegs, so that can't, you know, never hurts.
Thank you. Thank you guys for your input. Um, to kind of build off uh, some of what Rose was saying as well, I think one unique thing that um, that I experienced here for Borgade, um, the opportunity to to reach out to donors um, and to do this genuine type of checking up on them, um, because we're all kind of in this, you know, world of unknown, um, speaking specifically going, you know, back into last summer and then into the fall and the start of the school year. And one of the interesting things that I started to notice as I was reaching out to donors to, to do nothing but this kind of, you know, wellness check, um, they sort of mirrored a genuine interest in what we're doing here at the school. Not that in the past their, their interest wasn't genuine, but it sort of started this organic conversation of, you know, me calling and saying, how are you guys doing? How is everyone being able to have a little bit more of a connection point there, just talking about the pandemic and how it's affected, you know, one another, and then having them reciprocate that and asking, well, what are you guys doing at the school and having their genuine interest turn toward the school side, you know, well, what, what's your plan or what are some of the things that you're doing? Um, I just think there was a, a more genuine connection there than maybe in the past where it was just, oh, you have your list of donors and, um, you know, let, let's see if we can get through this list through the summer and just make that contact point to just check it off. Um, the pandemic kind of created this organic, um, just real interest in, in how things are going for each other. Um, and that's led to, to some people kind of coming back into the fold for, for Borgade, being able to have that conversation with them, a deeper conversation about what's exactly happening here at our school. Um, they've been able to re-engage. So that, that's been um, a high point for us to, to, again, just have that genuine connection point. Um, how about for the admissions side? Anyone who, who represents admissions at their school, some of the things that you've had to to kind of navigate around for events or, you know, different recruiting opportunities or, um, you know, not being able to show people around campus. What are some of the ways that you've, that you've navigated those challenges? Hi, I'm Guillermo from Seton Catholic admissions director here. Um, obviously we've had to do a lot of changes for um, admissions this year, everything had to be virtual. So starting with our school visits, we weren't able to go visit the students at the elementary school. So the majority of the schools we did online, well, for all the schools, we did an online school visit. So either they logged into their laptop um, or they projected on screen and they went into their uh, bigger, either cafeteria or multi-purpose room. And we, in some schools we did have, my assistant went to visit the school uh, while I did the presentation through the, and the uh, ambassadors did the presentation online and they, you know, had us on screen, we had one person there. So we kind of limit who would go to the schools, but it worked out for us. I think it was nice to be able to do that virtually because usually when the students have questions, we try to explain, you know, the answer and here virtually, if they had a question on something, let's say in athletics, I was able to go to the website and show them right there images and videos and go to our YouTube. So it kind of worked out, it had a lot more interactive element to it and visual element to it than just us standing there talking about the school um, and showing our, our PowerPoint with just images. Um, if they had a question that wasn't in our presentation, then I was able to quickly show them through our website. So that was nice to do that. And then on campus, um, we our open house had to be virtual. So virtual open house, we did a virtual tour. So I recorded all the areas of the school, put that into little segments. And we did a presentation with our ambassadors online. So it worked out as well too, instead of everyone trying to walk through campus and usually the group in the back can listen to the ambassador or has a harder time hearing, everyone had a front row seat here to our school. So even though you couldn't visit in person, you still got to experience our school and got to visually see our school. So that worked out for us. Our shadow days too had to be virtual this year. So we didn't have any students on campus. So what we did is we created an entire web page and virtually transformed our shadow day onto this web page. And we had all our ambassadors record uh, a video on the class or subject they took. So the student, if an incoming freshman was interested in let's say engineering, well, they can click on the video from that student or two students to talk about their engineering course. So it came directly from the student. Um, and then we also linked it to the teacher 
we had this year, we did a teacher welcome instead of a meet the teacher night, we had to do all virtual meet the teacher night. So we had all the teachers record video so they can actually meet the teachers um, and look at the syllabus and understand what they're, you know, offer in that course. So that also worked out for us being virtual. Then our high school placement test was a little bit different. We had to offer virtual for those that weren't comfortable coming in person. So we, we had to do it in person. And what we did is we spread out through campus instead of usually just having it in one location, we actually spread out through campus and had staggered start times so that we didn't have, you know, 100 over 100 students waiting in line in here. So we separate them throughout campus in different locations. So that worked out for us quite well. And then the online, we did have uh, about two dozen students take it online. So um, that worked out as well. That one's we were a little iffy on the online high school placement test, but it seemed to have worked out for that. And then the best thing I think that worked out for us was interviews. We did all interviews also virtually. And we kind of like that tonight. That's something we might keep for next year, just do all our, because we don't have to wait to have them come here. I mean, and usually when we have our interviews, we have no shows or traffic problems, they're late. You know, there's a lot going on and we don't get 100% participation. Virtually, we had only one person that didn't log in because they had problems, but everyone else was able. They've, everyone's so used to logging in and using Zoom now they had no issues with them, no technical issues at all, so which was great. And they all logged in. We were able to complete all our interviews all in one day, which was great. Um, so I think that's something great that came out of this, that we might just keep that same format for interviews, especially for those that are out of state. Uh, we interviewed quite a few out of state that helped a lot instead of doing phone interviews. I think uh, transitioning to Zoom really helped a lot. So. The only downfall to all of this was the no community events. See, in Catholic, we haven't been able to do any community events. I go out to, usually Chandler has their parade or their Dia de los Muertos, thing. any community events, Tempe, Tardiada, all those things that we go to and have a booth, we haven't been able to do that. So we haven't been able to expose ourselves out into the community as much. So that's the only downfall to all of this, that the, and they haven't done any virtual events like that. So. Um, that's pretty much where we, what we had to do this year here at Seaton Catholic, so. Awesome, Guillermo, thank you so much for sharing. That's, sure. that's super insightful. Um, just a quick reminder, if, if you are jumping on a little bit later here, um, if you could just take a quick second to type your name, um, your school or your organization, and then your role um, at your school or organization into the chat, uh, just helps us keep track of attendance here. Um, and I send that over to the CSO, but yeah, Guillermo, again, thank you. Um, I think that's a good segue to, to learning, you know, what, what are some of the things that we have had to adjust with technology that we don't think we'll ever go back on? Like I know last time uh, Jim had presented, he's saying that keeping the live stream element or, or the virtual engagement for even an in-person fundraiser is something that they're going to look to continue to do. Um, what are some of the other things that we've had to do virtually because of the pandemic that we've actually found to be super beneficial and, and moving forward, we're, we're probably going to keep that virtual element to, to whatever we're able to do in the future. Don't be shy. I think uh, I'll, I'll give an example from, from Borgade's standpoint. Um, one of the ways that, that using Zoom and technology has really made things efficient for us um, are advisory board meetings. We've had so much more engagement from our board members because um, they're, they're able to just either be at home because they're working at home or it's a quick commute from their work to home to get home in time for the meeting instead of having to either cross town to come to Borgade for an in-person meeting. You know, when we have an hour or an hour, 15 minute board meeting and they're here in person at the campus, for some of our board members, that's a two hour, two and a half hour commitment when you include travel time and things like that. And, and most of them have families and kids at home and stuff like that. So being able to meet virtually via Zoom um, and not just have it be a conference call where we can't really engage with each other visually, um, that's been huge for us and our board has really been a little bit more 
re-energized um, because they're not having this extra, to put this extra time and responsibility into the commute of actually getting here for a board meeting um, and those types of things. So that's that's been really good for us in, in terms of our board engagement, being able to meet virtually. I'd echo that. From an admission side, um, we this is Miranda at Borgade Catholic High School. We have done information nights in the past in person last year, actually had one about a week before we had to shut down and we had about 10 families show up again because it was after school. Some of their kids had sporting commitments so they couldn't go. Um, but we've done three virtually this year and being able to throw the Spanish version of the PowerPoint in the chat for families to follow along has been super helpful. Having someone designated as co-host that's bilingual who's answering questions in real time and not having to like pause and awkwardly pick them out of the audience to have them translate for us. So doing those virtual events where it's intentionally an hour, we have every single one of our admin available and present to each give a small portion of their presentation. And then families, we actually had a couple of families that are like watching it on their TV on Zoom and they're sitting on the couch together. So it was more of like a family event. I don't think I would ever go back to doing it fully in person. I think it really allowed families to learn about Borgate from their home and made Borgate feel like a part of their home, so. Thanks, Miranda. Yeah, for some of the, the grade schools, for those of you that may handle the admission side, I, I know, you know, um, having families come toward the school and do those types of things and see classrooms, especially for the younger grades. That's a huge piece of what you all do on the admissions front for the grade schools. Does anyone have any input there in how you've had to adjust maybe some of those things? Did, did you go to virtual tours? Was there another method that you used to help showcase the school to those families um, who would otherwise be kind of coming through the classrooms and being able to see things in person? Hi, this is Jamie Bizak from St. John Bosco. I can share on that. Um, I attempted when the pandemic first started to do a lot of virtual tours, but we were having many of our families, they wanna see the campus. So I went ahead and started doing in-person again and um, did it at a certain point of the day. It was just with me, we were masked up, distanced. We're lucky that our school is an outside school. Um, parents weren't able to go you know, necessarily inside the classrooms, but I could open the door, they could take a peek. So they were able to see everything they wanted to see. And I was able to connect to them in person and answer all of their questions. So when it came to our open house that we usually do during Catholic Schools Week, we knew we couldn't do the traditional having everyone come and gather in the NPR and with all the pomp and circumstance and I had to rework it. And so I went ahead and made it an open house week and had a sign up genius and families would just either call the office or they had that link and they could schedule their own time for a personal tour that they, you know, and I was scheduled from gosh, eight o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night, every hour on the hour from Monday through Thursday. And it did work. It generated a lot of families. It's helped our enrollment. Um, but I also was able to still give those virtual tours for families who were maybe coming from out of state and I would take them along on my iPhone all around campus and speak to the kids and speak to the parents and try to keep it as personal as I can. So I agree with everything everyone's saying about having that hybrid model. Um, now that we've, you know, there are some blessings with the pandemic. Now we know we can reach even more people using our technology. And um, that was even evident during our recent gala. We did a virtual gala and I really appreciate um, one of our last meetings where uh, other schools had shared how they did the virtual gala. Oh my gosh, it was so wonderful to use yeah. um, and borrow ideas from everyone, especially with Night of Hope. Um, our gala went really, really well because we were able to pre-record some stuff. We did some stuff live from our media lab um, and we exceeded our goal. So now moving forward, we know that we're gonna continue doing that hybrid model. We you know, hope that we'll be back at the Sheraton next year and doing the gala in person. But to have that hybrid for those grandparents that don't live in town or people that, you know, maybe aren't, don't want to pay for the babysitter, but they still want to bid, they still want to be involved. Um, we're going to move forward with that for next year. So lots of exciting things. Um, thank you. 
Awesome. Congratulations on, on a successful event too. That's so cool to hear. And, and I feel like those who are moving to a virtual event are, are seeing a little bit of, of success with some of the things that they're able to do um, just in the virtual space versus in person. So congratulations. That's, that's so awesome. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I also want to mention one more thing. Another thing that went really well is um, we have SEO nights throughout the year. And we had one, we've had a couple and we're getting ready to have another one, hopefully in the spring. Um, we had mo more people than ever attend our virtual STO night than normally would. You know, when we have it in the evening, maybe five, 10, I mean, we've had it down to maybe only one or two parents would come to an STO night, you know, because again, they have to cook dinner, they have to take care of their family. And when we did it virtually, we had over 50 people attend. 50 families. And I could see some of them, you know, at the kitchen table with their um, children eating dinner as they're enjoying and listening to the STO um, representative. So that was something too, I think going forward, we'll continue to do in because some, we like the in-person, you want to meet people. We don't want to get away from that, but to have that hybrid model, I think is awesome too, for your STO nights. That's such a good point because I think that um, sometimes when we're putting all this work in, you know, us as the development people or the admissions people, we're investing all this time and energy into what can we do better? How can we shift to, you know, what we got asked to kind of shift from what we've been doing. Um, some of us have been doing for a long time. All of a sudden we have to do something new and we're constantly looking through the lens of, well, how, how is it going to affect us or me, you know, my responsibilities or us as a school? And then I think sometimes we have to think, well, how is the audience receiving it? Because if we do it this way and they received it really well, you know, they like the virtual um, platforms and those types of things. Um, would we be doing ourselves a disservice by going back to the way things were? Because now they're so accustomed to the virtual landscape. They're so accustomed to the convenience of being able to just jump on a Zoom instead of having to go somewhere. Um, so it's important, I think, that we always try to be in the mindset of the attendees or the, or the users when it comes to those different things, because, um, you know, they're, they're going to love the convenience factor. So um, it, it might hurt us to go all the way back to revert all the way back. So it's nice to hear that people are, are, are thinking along the lines of, you know, we're going to do hybrid, hybrid versions, or we're going to stay virtual in this space and then in person in this space. Um, I think that's super important. Um, when, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. This is Lori at St. Mary Basha. Um, and Jamie had a lot of um, really awesome ideas and we've implemented a few of those with success as well. Um, and one thing I was going to add to it was we didn't have, we don't have like a school tour on our website, but what we were able to do is um, get photos from each grade level. And we had one of our teachers just put together 20, 30 second videos for each grade level so that instead of our open house, we unveiled those videos so that people can come in and like, if you have a second grader coming in, you can go in and um, see what the second grade classrooms look like um, and kind of get a feel for what campus is like and that kind of thing. But you can pick any grade level and see, you know, what you can kind of expect, um, you know, and it's right on the front page of our website. So if somebody's browsing over there, um, you know, it's just a real quick sample of what it looks like here. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. What well, speaking in, in, in the landscape of website, social media, is there anyone who wants to speak to um, maybe you weren't using a ton of social media before, or maybe your website was just kind of updated every so often, but now with those two access points being really the only way that people can really consume the information because there weren't any in-person stuff. Did you find yourself really starting to learn kind of social media and doing some new things that you maybe would have never done before on social media, website, those types of things? Anyone have experience with that? I know Borgade live stream. That was a huge thing for us. That was something that we never, we, we'd always kind of done video and photos and specific messaging, but the live stream when it came to sporting events or different things going on on campus, um, that was never something that we had really cared to, to kind of invest in, but um, our community latched onto it, especially from the sports when, when it was limited attendance for, for fans and, and things like that. We had to kind of sort of learn really quickly, okay, how do we put on a a decent live stream and how can we ensure that, um, you know, parents and community members can can receive some of this content. 
Jim with the what's social media in the chat. Okay, Jim. Okay. Any other social media, anyone on social media with, with any unique stories or challenges or, or maybe things that you saw work really well that you, that you would have never um, known if you hadn't been forced to kind of move things to a social media world? This is uh, Marissa Heinley from St. John 23rd. Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm new to this position, new to the school and everything. Um, so learning everything that the school's done beforehand was uh, a treat, especially coming into COVID because I don't think anyone could have prepared me or anyone in our position for what was gonna come. Um, however, the one thing that we have heard a lot from parents is how grateful social media has been because with certain events or fundraisers coming up, we'll do a huge push on like specifically our stories because those are just visual reminders that are constantly on people's feed rather than you missing a post from someone, the stories are always gonna pop up at the top of whatever platform you're using, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. So we were able to put on one of our events that's really just for the kids. Um, it's called Field Day. So it's basically just a little fun competition day where the classes, it's like class versus class. We tie dye shirts leading up to it. So it's really fun and just a very spirited event. And typically there's like 19 stations, but because of COVID, we put that down to 10 stations. Um, and just made it a lot more spread out. And so parents, there's usually like a hundred parents, you know, the moms just want to be involved as much as they can. So there's usually like hundreds of parents here helping out, but since they couldn't be here, everyone was super bummed. So I felt like I was annoying at first on social media. I was posting probably at least once or twice every hour to our story as if they were there. And we got like tons of huge feedback from that saying they were just so grateful because we can't even, we can't have parents on campus, you know? Um, so making them feel like they are a part of the campus still, like just by posting our lunchtime tournaments or what is sixth grade doing in class today, they just feel like they're still part of the community, which they are, but um, the whole virtual element has been really hard for everyone to adjust to, but that was super successful for sure. That's awesome. Thank you, Marissa. Appreciate that, that insight. Um, what about qu questions? Anyone have any questions about um, for the group, just you know, curious about things that that maybe were done from a different school or um, things about moving forward. You know, what what are going to be some of the strategies moving forward? Did anyone have any questions that they kind of wanted to just throw out to the group um, to just get some general feedback on? All right. All right. Any other topics that, that we kind of wanted to throw out there? Um, I know it's a lot. I'm sure, I know even just this morning, I've been thinking about what are all the things that have, it seems like forever, it seems like, well, I don't even remember pre-COVID time. So what exactly has changed? But um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we live in a, in a new world here. And, and um, although things seem to be getting better with the vaccine rollouts, uh, I think it's still a while before we can revert to some of the some of the stuff that, that we've done before. And as we talked about earlier in this meeting, um, you know, maybe, maybe the maybe the best plan of action is to not revert all the way back to to the way things were, um, because we've been able to find some good initiatives and some good opportunities to to do some different things and, and maybe cast a little bit wider net where where wider nets need to be cast. Um, the last thing I want to throw out there that I was just curious about, curious about for for the development side of things, um, when it comes to stewardship and, and saying thank you and and those types of things, I, Rose, you always have a lot of good a good input here. Um, but maybe if there's someone else or, or Rose, if you do want to chime in, I, I'm just curious some of the things that that you've may, maybe had to adjust on the saying thank you side. Um, you know, not being able to take someone out to lunch or or do those types of things that that we otherwise would have done. Uh, stewardship. Yeah. A any strategies there? So, yeah, I mean, with the elementary school budget and because we serve pre-K through eighth grade kids, I, I feel like I'm lucky because it's always easy to, um, to ask a student to help out. So one of the things I have is I have an angel for our guardian angel program. And then we ask students to write their uh, first name and grade on the back. And then I send that out to our, our guardian angels. And so many of them write back and say, it's up on my um, 
up on my refrigerator or it's on my bulletin board at home or something like that. So that's really simple. Um, <clears throat> and then the students really like that um, because we just did a, um, we just had a new building built. Uh, one of the things I did was I got some sun catchers and I had some junior high kids paint the sun catchers. And, um, and that's gonna be part of the gift that we give to some of the people who, who built the building. Um, it's part of a bigger package, but it's just nice because the kids need service hours too. And they're having a hard time doing any service because they can't be out in the community. So it's nice that I can reach out to, to some of these kids and have them paint or draw or color or do things. And they feel like they're still being service oriented. And yet it helps me as development director. Um, I really never had a budget to take people out to lunch. Sometimes we'd meet, maybe meet for coffee, but you're right. I think sometimes, um, you know, that really does help you be a little bit more creative with your thank yous. Um, one of the things we did in years past, but uh, it was our preschool class. And I don't know if you can see behind me, my Larry Fitzgerald, it's kind of a canvas. That's what we, we bought a canvas that was about that size. And we had preschool, um, they, they uh, made a heart and then they put their handprints all in different colors in the heart. And we did thank you from the bottom of our heart. And then what I did was I had them make three. I only needed one at the time, but I bought all the supplies and everything. I said, could you make me three of them so that I had them? And I'm just using my last one right now for a donor who gave us quite a nice donation for our family services program. And it's, it's gonna be something that she's gonna really enjoy having and it looks nice. It's on canvas, it's all muted colors. So it, 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 um, it doesn't look too little kiddish. It actually looks uh, nice. Uh, so those are some ideas, mostly pretty simple because we're in elementary school. Um, but one of the thing, oh, the other thing that we've done and I haven't implemented yet, but I have about four graduates of St. Vincent de Paul School who've gone to high school and college and they made videos thanking donors for what they had because at St. Vincent, they were able to go um, with limited resources, they were able to come to our school. And so uh, I've been able to collect a few of those and then I'm gonna use them at either um, a virtual event or to send individually to donors saying, you know, because of your gift, this is where uh, one of our students is now. Awesome. Yeah. I love the, the video idea. I think one thing that we've learned, is it's just so simple um, with the technology and stuff. You, you wouldn't have otherwise known unless you were forced to use more video and, and do more with video. Um, uh, you know, we, that's sort of our go-to now, um, you know, is, is what can we do through video? Cause it creates that visual aspect for people um, a little bit more of a deeper connection, whether it's a whether it's an admissions message where you're trying to get people invested in the school or whether it's a donor message where you, you just wanna say thank you and, and show your gratitude. Um, having a student on camera or having someone express their gratitude on camera um, is something that I think goes a long way for people even, even now as people are, are diving more into video and, and um, those types of things. So thank you for sharing. Anything else on the, on the stewardship front? Um, from anybody in terms of saying thank you or, or things that you've been able to do or things that you haven't been able to do because of, of restrictions? Okay. Um, one last thing I want to throw out there for Borgade's getting ready to do our, our virtual um, legacy gala next month and, and all the last minute kind of pieces are coming together and those types of things. I was just curious, those who have had an auction component to their, to their either, you know, um, dinner fundraiser or, or the virtual fundraisers that you've been doing um, in terms of like soliciting donation items from businesses or even having parents on your behalf going out to businesses. Have you seen any fluctuation there? Um, a decrease in items that are coming in versus past years, maybe an increase and items that are coming in versus past years. Any anyone care to share there? Well, uh, we had ours in August, you know, so kind of deep in the heart of the whole thing. And we had a very difficult time getting restaurants. Actually, we were hesitant to do restaurants because we didn't know if they would be around, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and certainly all the sporting events things, you know, they that just dried up completely. 
Um, I should think though, going forward that uh, um, it should be getting a little bit better. We were able to get some golf things and, and I was able to secure a lot of golf. We, my, my committee folks were able to secure some golf foursomes and stuff like that for our golf event. So golf always seems to be always safe, but, uh, but I think going forward, it's going to, you know, kind of loosen up. Uh, we didn't have anything with trips per se. We had a couple trips, but not, they were more drivable things. Um, uh, and, uh, but, you know, going forward, I think we're, you know, getting better. So, uh, you know, for what it's worth. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. The trip stuff, um, our, our school, we particularly choose not to necessarily um, get involved with consignment type of, of trips and, and it's just our own choice. But um, I, I've noticed that, that that's all that's reaching out. And I think it comes from the standpoint of um, especially travel agencies and people who are trying to get back, you know, trying to get their business on the upswing from the travel aspect. Um, they're definitely the ones who have been reaching out the most and, and actually seeking us out instead of us soliciting donations from them. Um, you know, they're, they're re I probably get three or four a day that are, you know, would you be interested in doing this consignment style travel package um, with us? So um, I, I think you're, you're right. It's kind of hit or miss some of those more experiences, which in the past, that's what we're always looking for because those are the popular items within the auction. Um, but yeah, the restaurants and, and those family experiences, trips, stays, those types of things. Um, have, for us, it's been a little bit more difficult to come by. Um, although a couple have, have come through and said, you know, we're, we're ready to, to um, donate again. So, all right. I'll throw it out there one more time. Anything else, um, any other topics or ideas or anything that just you just wanted to share kind of with the with the group in general? Um, you guys are all doing such amazing things. And part of the reason why I wanted to have this discussion was was one to to just again swap ideas and, and um, talk about some different things that we've had to adjust, but also to highlight some of the stuff that that you guys have been able to do really well for your schools. Um, it sounds like, uh, it seems like every meeting we're always hearing just a, of a great, you know, great progress at, at one of the schools or more of the schools um, with things that you're being able to do despite all the challenges and obstacles. So um, keep, keep up the good work. But yeah, one last time, if there's any, anything that anybody wants to throw out there before we, before we cut it off and I'll, I'll throw it over to CEA here in a second. I know they probably have some updates, but just from the development or the admission standpoint, anything before we, we move on? All right, Deb. I saw you in the chat. You wanna you wanna jump on and share a couple updates? Oh, I can't hear you, Deb. I don't know if anyone else can hear you. Nothing yet. I think I can hear you typing. She's typed a message into chat for everybody. Deb, I'm still not hearing you. If you want to throw it into the chat, I can kind of read it out loud. Uh, your first message here, um, CEA reminding everyone to promote your school um, for free through the monthly newsletter. So they've been doing a really nice job with their newsletter that goes out, um, talking about the alumni stories, um, a couple of really nice features in there, talking about their podcast as well. Nancy always has a piece in there that's really nice to read. Um, it looks like they're up to uh, 24,000 subscribers. So um, a pretty nice audience there. And, and again, it's free advertising for your school, free promotion for your school if you, uh, if you work with CEA to get, um, to get whatever content you might want in that in that newsletter. Yeah, Rose, go ahead. Oh, I think you're muted.
Um, Deb, also wanting to remind everyone, um, they have the ability to send a list of donors that have not contributed yet for the 2020 tax year. Um, if you would be able to email those folks from your end, it would be helpful. So if there's any, if there's any way the schools can help email um, donors for the tax year, um, great news. They've surpassed last year's total in contributions, but there's always room for growth and more. So um, whatever you can do on your end from, from your school's standpoint, uh, it'd be a big help to them. They're doing a lot of really great things. So um, again, whatever we can do to, to further that partnership between our schools and CEA, um, let's always put our foot on that gas pedal. Um, just give a shout out to CEA from Borgade. Um, recently, this past week, we, we did our first um, CEA corporate breakfast event, and it was pretty well attended. Um, as I was sharing with some of the CEA folks, I, I think the real value was in kind of going through our prospect list and looking at vendors and looking at potential corporations that might want to might want to support our school. Um, that was something that, that we at Borgade had never really done before, not quite to the extent of, of how we did it when we needed to send an actual invite to an event. So being able to make a contact with those businesses, even if they weren't able to make it at the breakfast event, um, we've made that outreach and, and we've made that point of contact. So moving forward, that's, that transition is going to be a lot more um, seamless for us to be able to, to work with those businesses and identify those businesses. So thank you to CEA for, for helping with that event. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to, to continuing that work. I think, Brian, this is Colleen. Sorry about that. Um, I just saw Deb put it in the chat, but I was going to say the same thing reach out to us if there's any school out there that wants to have a corporate breakfast or if you want to attend one of the upcoming ones so that you can see the format of it uh you know we're happy to help you just give me a call reach out to me or deb we can help you with that and i i don't know what i clicked but i couldn't find my mute or my unmute button <laughs> but i wanted to thank cea and especially colleen um i was so scared to do the podcast i just i i don't know i just was so nervous about it she made it just so comfortable. We chatted. She let me know ahead of time her questions. So I was able to sort of think about what stories I wanted to tell. And um, uh, so I just wanted to, to thank them for that opportunity. Um, I shouted out to Borgade too, because I'm a Borgade alum, but it was, it was nice to be able to talk about our school and to talk about Catholic education and um, just to reach out. So I wanted to thank CEA for that. Um, I, I was very nervous, but it worked out okay. It's funny, you know, there's, again, this is Colleen again. Um, there's a lot of people that come on the podcast who they say, oh, I haven't done this before. And I realize that. So I, I really make it very simple. I make it very comfortable. And not just the podcast, not just the corporate breakfast. If there is anybody on this call who wants any free advertising at all, call me. I'll give you like six different options to get you some free advertising. I'm happy to help you with that. If, if a podcast isn't your thing, we'll figure out something else, okay? Happy to help you guys. Awesome. Thank you both Deb and Colleen and, and everyone else on your team. Um, thank you for all the support and, and everything that you guys are doing. So um, those of us who have been around for a couple of years, it, it's nice to see CA really just diving in head first with a lot of different new initiatives and, and new strategies. Um, just really keeping up with the times. I, I think it's so awesome to see. And I know our schools are benefiting greatly. So Colleen is the Larry King of podcasts. <laughs> From Jim. <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if, if there's not anything else, I think that that does it for our meeting. Um, excuse me. I don't see anybody from Catholic Schools Office. I don't know if there's anybody connected to the Catholic Schools Office that might have updates. Um, going once, going twice. I don't think so. Everyone's kind of in uh, in home stretch mode as we as we get down to uh, toward the end of the school year. But um, to those of you that that haven't had spring break yet, wishing you all a, a really safe and healthy and happy spring break. Take some time to recharge if, if you're able to get that time off. Um, I know it, it was much needed for a lot of folks on our end, and uh, we're in this uh, Borgata starting this finish strong campaign for our students, for our teachers, for our parents. 
Um, we, we've initiated this finish strong. Yesterday was our first day back from spring break. Um, we're doing, uh, there's 10 things for the last 10 weeks of school. So we have 10 initiatives going on for the last 10 weeks of school that are all part of this finish strong campaign. Um, and even in just one day's time, I know the students have really rallied behind it. Teachers are invested. Um, there's a there's kind of this new sense of energy as we make our way toward the end of the school year. So keep up the great work, everybody. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Our next meeting will be in April, and I'm not thinking of the date off the top of my head. Um, the next meeting in April will be to plan for the 2021-2022 series of meetings. So if there was a topic that you've you know, that you really want covered, or that maybe there was one this past year that you would like to see reintroduced in, in next year's meetings. Um, that's going to be the meeting where you give that input. So really encourage everyone to attend those meetings or to attend that next meeting um, so that we can get a really dynamic um, series of presenters lined up going into next year. I know that um, you guys are here for a reason and, and most of you find these meetings pretty helpful, or if you at least get one bit of idea out of it, um, it's a success. So, so thank you for your time and um, wishing everyone a great rest of your week. And uh, yeah, keep doing good things. You're all rock stars. Thank you so much, Brian. Sure thing.